On January 12th, major investors from around the world convened at the United Nations headquarters in New York for the fifth Investor Summit on Climate Risk and Energy Solutions. They were there to call for swift action and investment on global climate change. The message that we want to make clear coming out of today is that acting on climate change is an imperative. It's crucial for our future, for national security, for the environment, and for the economy, and that there are economic opportunities to do that. We're here at the United Nations with trillions of dollars of investors who are looking for ways to invest in clean technology. That's the future. We're seeing more of it, uh, and that's where we got to go. Well, I invest uh, with my staff, $70 billion globally across all asset classes, so real estate, stocks, you name it. And uh, global climate change can affect all of that, uh, both in terms of opportunities to have a good return for the portfolio, but also in terms of risk. Um, in North Carolina, I think we, we, we know with the outer banks that there could potentially be sea rise if we don't curb uh, global uh, you know, emissions of carbon. Uh, we also know there could be changing agricultural zones with traditionally a strong agricultural state. So, I mean, there's a lot of concerns just about how it could affect our economy over time. And the risks related to climate change are now provably immense. The estimates suggest north of $7 trillion. That's my primary role as a fiduciary who helps to guide $98 billion worth of investments. I also am a statewide elected official, so if there's anything I can do to increase the economic security of Pennsylvanians, I'm going to look at doing that. And I think that's why this summit is so important. It brings together really the major players in this business to try and get more and more on board to recognize it's vital to our industry, vital to our success as investors to be stronger in this area. So what we're looking at is really the total fund perspective. So this is looking at strategic asset allocation. So which asset classes are placed to either position themselves well or suffer in the face of different climate change scenarios? Today, investors can deploy capital in a manner that brings them stable returns while also addressing the need for low carbon energy, and that is through the finance of renewable energy projects. When investors deploy capital into renewable energy projects, they're investing in proven technologies, solar PV, wind, biomass, geothermal, these technologies can be put to work today. The deals can be structured such that investors can enjoy virtually bond-like long-term returns with immediate yield. Companies who don't get this really risk becoming irrelevant to the marketplace. Uh, whether you believe it for climate change or just the markets that are developing, uh, it is our responsibility as businesses to sort of be responsive to the design signal that the world is telling us. And that is all about Let's do more with less, particularly around natural resources. Regionally, priorities areas for me, of course the United States, but Australia, who's just priced carbon, continue to focus on Europe that really sets regulatory trends throughout the world. China, who's just announced a 12 five-year plan that couldn't be more clear around where they want to go in clean technology. And then next, Brazil. You know, there's this theory that you have to pick one, economics or environmental performance. That's nonsense. Innovation is the way you can have both. How's that working for us? In the first five years, we had $85 billion in revenue. The exciting thing is that revenue is growing more than 2x the rest of the portfolio. So the signal from the marketplace is we like this. One, that the time for action or inaction is over, that we really do have to act. And two, there's a way that we can act and create a win-win situation where we create jobs, get a good return for investors, and clear up a problem uh, that really threatens the future of mankind. I'm never satisfied. We need to see more speed, but the fact that we just hit a trillion dollars in investments over the last six years in clean technology is a good sign. We need to ramp that up mightily. We need to get to scale. Uh, eventually, we'll need government's help. We need to get policy changes, but while politics is not working in our favor on regulating climate change, the, the private sector is moving forward. They're investing, they're making money, they're creating jobs. It is absolutely the future of our economy. No, I think it's great. I, I would just congratulate Ceres, uh, the UN Foundation and the UN for hosting this. I think these agendas and these conversations are incredibly important to move it along. So, uh, thanks.